Our panelists for the next section will provide us with a view from the ground. So we have Ketan Vedya, who is the news editor, Mumbai Mirror, Pragati Bhankale, assistant news editor, Maharashtra Times. May I request her to come on the dais, please? Ismatara, investigative journalist with the wire and a recipient of the Ladley Media and Advertising Award for Gender Sensitivity 2021 for her meticulous report on the Hathras case. Moderating the session will be Nidhi Jamwal, who is the Deputy Managing Editor for Gaon Connection. So over to our panelists now for the next section. Thank you. Uh, namaste everyone uh, and a uh, very very warm welcome to all of you uh, i think um, uh, pandemic has really taught us a lot of things and one of them is to have hybrid events like this where i guess a couple of us are sitting here in mumbai and we have a lot of people including some panelists joining us from other cities and i think because this is a, a hybrid event i'll also keep switching between hindi and english languages so that a lot of people who are joining us from other cities can also participate and you know uh, understand and the issues that we are uh, discussing. Um, so without, um, I think this report that has just been uh, uh, released uh, by uh, UNFPA along with Population First and the support of Norwegian Embassy and so well presented by uh, Swati and Samira is very crucial for us because a lot of times media people, uh, we keep putting spotlight on a lot of issues, but reports like this actually show us a mirror. Uh, and we, we all have so much to learn from all these uh, reports. Um, so the uh, panel discussion that we have uh, today is around reporting on rape in the Indian media, the ground reality. And like uh, Ritu just told us about the panelists who will be discussing these issues. Uh, I think the first thing what I would want uh, from the panelists is the report that has just been released and the findings if from their personal experience, they can tell in the last 10 years, how do they see uh, uh, the face of uh, media as far as gender sensitive reporting is concerned, uh, changing specifically from their, uh, you know, uh, media house side. So if, uh, you know, Pragati, because you're, if, if you can begin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ladli and UNFPA family for having me on this panel and thank you Shweta and Samira for this wonderful report just she has mentioned it is just like a mirror to us media persons I'm associated with a largely more than 10 years more than decade and during this period we have covered a lot of a lot of things related with women and uh, related issues. When it comes to the rape after Delhi rape incidents, whatever just, uh, just we have seen the reports and their findings, same criteria as if we go through. When we see a regional media in that report, we have seen the media houses those media houses, you can see that those are media houses from the uh, respective states and uh, those are main media houses having multiple editions. Okay, so that editions are mainly published or you can say the main offices are in the capital city of those states. Okay, if I am from regional media, I am uh, representing Maharashtra Times, which was mentioned in that report, and it is a Marathi media. Okay, it is a Marathi newspaper. If we see Marathi newspapers, then we can divide those Marathi newspapers in uh, two sections. It is not hard and fast, but uh, for time being, there are about 400 to 500 newspapers published daily in Marathi, and this is a huge number. Okay. And if we divide about, I think, 25, not more than that, we can say, okay, 50 newspapers are, we can say, as a, um, um, newspapers which are published in uh, capital cities and those are multi-editions newspaper, okay. But remaining newspapers are, we can say, as a district newspapers and the number is very high. So whatever we are 
uh, observing in this report or we see widely it is only published or the stories are only published in those 50 newspapers we can say but it is more than that what is published in district newspapers and they are having a wide range of readers so we it is it will be uh, it i'm not sure we can say uh, there is uh, sensible reporting in district newspapers so we can we cannot see we cannot say right now i'm sure there is uh, this is the case in rest of the india okay this will be the case in rest of india but yes we must agree that ki, uh, widely uh, the rapes are now widely covered and reported with much responsibility and sensitivity which was observed before 10 years okay so this is about the regional thing and i think i must mention this second thing is placement before delhi rape incidents rape stories were either ignored or dumped inside pages it it, it is true those never exceeded single column or dc in inside pages and hardly you will observe any follow ups of those stories uh, and there was a trend in Marathi newspaper, at least, uh, like Good Morning newspapers. Okay, so it was expected that when uh, when a person is having a newspaper in the morning with tea, so it should be goody uh, goody. Koi buri baat nahi honi chahiye in that paper. So of course, uh, rape cases were never covered on front pages or. The placement was not a prominent placement at that time. But uh, the thing is changed after the rep, and we can see uh, the prominent places given to the uh, rape cases also. Now, good placement is given, and those are widely covered, and the follow up is done, we can say. Of course, there are a few exceptions like uh, Kotevada, like Khairlanji or uh, Jelgao cases. So, there was, there was exceptions. Uh, this was about the placement. Uh, may I continue? Yeah. yeah. Huh. Then uh, about the privacy. Of course, names of victims or survivors are not published. But I must admit, number of times unnecessary details are still given. Unnecessary details like where she lives or about the neighborhood, where she works, about her family, family members, if there are children, about their mention of their children is there. But if person in news desk is sensible, it can be edited properly. I remember one incident. Um, there was a story uh, from North Mumbai, and uh, the victim was schoolgirl. And uh, this time, uh, job uh, edition was going on, and it was fired along with name of that school. Hmm? And uh, a printing was started. And when our editor uh, uh, came to know that the name of school is there in the story, at the time, few thousand copies were printed, but he stopped the press. And the name of school was not published in that uh, edition at that time. So uh, it is the great thing. I, uh, but still, we cannot say it is the 100% thing. Still, unnecessary details are given in the stories. Uh, one can differentiate uh, it, of course, case to case. Uh, just we have seen that IIT, G, Guwahati case. And uh, of course, in that case, the name of the institution, though it is the educational institute, the name should be there. So uh, it should be, uh, we should uh, differentiate case to case, of course. Uh, then sourcing. As uh, Shweta and Samira uh, mentioned in their report, it is true that 99% stories are totally. Uh, dependent upon FIR. That means the source, the one and only source is the police information. Okay. Uh, even it happens if FIR is, is if I, FIR is not registered, uh, we can say uh, there is an official guideline key you are not publishing that story. So it is a safe game which is played uh, after defamation cases and no media houses want that. And therefore, all uh, whatever is published at least in regional media 99 percent it totally depend upon fir then the second source we can say is hospitals doctors are another sources then organizations are there sometimes but 
very rarely you can see family members or uh, family members are the source of the information okay so this is one more observation we can say uh, i'll mention one more thing uh, about my um, uh, our edition of maharashtra times what happened uh, kavita mahajan uh, she was a, a late marathi writer and uh, in her um, i think that there was a facebook post by her and she mentioned that ki why you are publishing not only maharashtra times why uh, in newspapers the um, pictures along with rape cases are published like um, yeah like this when she is looking down and uh, like uh, the woman ah uh, yeah woman is shown in uh, see the shameful for that actually uh, she was saying ki why why you are showing like this actually men should be shameful for this act and uh, um, we uh, maharashtra times people came across to this post of kavita and we decided ki we will change that and we had meeting uh, with our um, artist and he had a set of those pictures in which men are shown like this and in the shameful manner so we are most of the times uh, right now we are using those pictures and i think this is a very important thing which is changed after delhi rep yeah yeah sure 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 yeah uh, uh, thank you so much pragati you brought out some very important points and i think you opened up the panel discussion in a very uh, i think fruitful manner now uh, coming to israt i think she's joining us uh, from uh, ismat is joining us from delhi right so um and how do we talk should we sit there or so i can no no this is good enough i'm just trying to sit in a way so that i can also see you ismat so <laughs> uh, uh so ismat is a, is an investigative journalist with the wire and uh, ismat you go to field and you report from field if you can tell us um how it is to report on rape and a sexual assault cases from the field in the last 10 years has it become easier or more challenging and specifically if you'll tell us that from a woman's perspective as a woman reporter how is it to report on it from the ground Uh, hi, hi, hi. Uh, first of all, I would just like to begin by thanking population first, Dr. L. Sharda, UNFP, Royal Norwegian Embassy, uh, for this very important paper. And I think it's really, really important that we are talking about this today. Uh, I think uh, in the past ten uh, years, so I can't really. Uh, I have. I'm quite young, and I have really like closely covered a few rape cases uh, so far. One of uh, which is the Hathras case. um so uh, in my experience being a woman trying to cover uh, rape cases has uh, some consequences uh, which uh, like for example there was this one time when i was uh, in uh, haryana for a story where uh, apparently uh, there was a woman who had been killed by her own family because uh, uh, it was basically a case of honor killing and i had gone to this village where uh, i was asking uh, the i i asked the family a question and the family got so uh, defensive and sort of so angry that i was uh, that they picked up uh, shoes and stones and rocks and and a lot of like a group of people started chasing me out of the village so i had to run for my life because i had asked that one wrong question so there's a lot of like expectations uh, uh, from the society that you don't ask them uh, questions like in the hathras case if we talk about the hathras case specifically uh, i think hathras case was one of the cases where uh, uh, which was particularly subject to like a lot of distortion because the government uh, did not want to look bad at that time the woman was a dalit woman the perpetrators as we've spoken about it before were uh, from the upper caste there had been a delay in the filing of the fir the women's body was burnt without the permission of her family and by the time that the case started you know gaining a lot of momentum it had become like a fully political uh, case with leaders of opposition who, who were rallying towards the village uh, so i think in that case particularly uh, the uh, the society the way that uh, the society was talking about that case especially the villagers where where the case had happened uh the 
the and the paper also talks about it the, there's a patriarchal moral lens that is applied to you know closely scrutinize the behavior of the survivors instead of the perpetrators in the hathras case what happened was even after the woman had died the girl had died she was constantly being tried her ca- character was you know constantly being questioned i remember when i was in hathras the two main narratives that had come up uh, around that time from the locals themselves was one was that the victim had an affair uh, with the accused implying that she had previously had physical relations with him so it implied that what happened was okay because she had relations with the boy second narrative that uh, that was uh, uh, like uh, like a hot burning cake in the whole village was that the family themselves had killed the girl because she had a relationship with the boy and they did not approve of the relationship and very conveniently uh, a few days after all of these narratives were you know uh, going around the uh, cdr the call data records uh, were released very conveniently by the police which showed uh, a number of phone calls between the mobile of the victim's family and the accused and by the way the family has denied uh, uh, that they ever spoke to the accused over the phone but you know this all of this conveniently these kind of uh, narratives the, these kind of uh, facts were like these kind of not facts sorry my bad these kind of inputs that were being uh, given very conveniently were adding to this narrative and similar stories uh, were uh, the stories that were being covered around them were also not questioning or debunking all these uh, narratives you know they were just uh, playing into the same narrative that had been uh, set in this case so i think i think yeah so in the past few years i'm sure a lot of as other journalists have also pointed out i'm sure things have changed but i'm not sure if things have changed enough you know thanks thanks ismat um, um... केतन आपके लिए मेरा जो आ, सवाल रहेगा बेसिकली जो हम लोगों को एक आ, अगर बात करें तो निर्भया केस की ही वो एक तरह का बेंचमार्क बन चुका है और काफी दफा मीडिया हाउसेस के साथ जो हमारे साथ भी एक गांव कनेक्शन में काफी दफा ऐसा होता है कि हमारे कम्युनिटी जर्नलिस्ट हमें रेप की स्टोरीज के बारे में बताते हैं कि भाई फलाना जगह जो है इस तरह का रेप हो गया है वहां हो गया है एक जब ये बेंच बन जाता है तो काफी बार ये हो जाता है कि जब तक जो जिस लड़की का रेप हुआ है बहुत ही घिनौने तरीके से नहीं हुआ तब तक उसको मीडिया कवर नहीं करता है मतलब एक तरह से लगता है कि ये तो हर अगले दिन होता रहता है आप कितनी स्टोरीज रिपोर्ट करेंगे सो फ्रॉम योर साइड केतन आई मीन हाउ वुड यू डिसाइड विच रेप केस से मिरर नाउ विल पिक अप एंड रिपोर्ट ऑन एंड विच इट वोट आई मीन आई नो इट्स डिफिकल्ट थिंग टू हैंडल बट हाउ वुड यू एड्रेस आप कैसे उसको देखते हैं नहीं आ, मैं तो आ, अपने निजी लेवल पे आ, बोल सकूंगा सिंपली बिकॉज मैं प्रवक्ता नहीं हूँ मैं एक मीडिया ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में हूँ हाँ लेकिन ऐसी केसेस कवर करने का तजुर्बा मुझे रहा है जब मैं एनडीटीवी में था और जब खैरलान खेर, जी का मसला हुआ था तो तब भी आ, मैं वहां पर आ, गया था और कोर्ट केस में उसकी जो सुनवाई हो रही थी तब एक वाक्य मुझे याद है रिमेंबर एन इंसिडेंट है court uh, coverage of the khelanji case uh, where the witness because he belonged to a so called lower caste and uh, the the perpetrators in this case were also obcs or backward caste uh, backward class but in the caste hierarchy they were a slightly higher so the victim literally fainted in the court and uh, i remember in ndtv we had uh, we had portrayed it at, as such and we had done a very factual Uh, reporting of the case however uh, uh, when the nirbhaya case happened i was uh, the human rights advisor in the us embassy in in delhi and uh, i had the chance to meet nirbhaya's father and in their original home and i saw that there was a collective shame because then i was intermittent i was not in the media and so i could look at things uh, from an outsider perspective and i saw that there was a collective shame that had set in as a society so media is not a different species or a or a rare animal species species we are a part of the larger uh, animal mind uh, excuse my word uh, uh, that that is the society and if the society felt a collective shame after nirbhaya then that shame had made its way in in the way uh, media covered and covered it sensitively and the findings of the report also 
collaborate that, elaborate that. Uh, I have a few points to make though, that I still feel that uh, intersectionality of caste and region is still questionable because I, I said that I had covered Kherlanji before and except NDTV and a couple of media, no media even went there. It was only when the case became political that uh, hordes and hordes of media uh, went there. Uh, so uh, stories are covered only when they become a part of political narrative is the point that I wish to make. Uh, my my other co-panelists have said in Hathras, in the case of Hathras, I think we have uh, lost Ketan. So I think till the time he uh, reconnects with us, uh, maybe, uh, you know, Pagati, if we come to you, and one thing that comes in front of you, as Ketan was telling us, that media is also a part of society. A lot of times, एक जो ट्रेनिंग देनी पड़ती है क्योंकि आप एज ए रिपोर्टर अगर आप इस तरह की रिपोर्टिंग कर रहे हैं आप ऐसे ही आ, कैमरा उठा के और माइक लेकर लोगों के पास जाके नहीं सो so, इस तरह की जो ट्रेनिंग है हमें पता है पॉपुलेशन फर्स्ट काफी सालों से ये कर रहा है मीडिया के साथ में बट इज देयर इनफ ट्रेनिंग हैपनिंग ऑफ रिपोर्टर्स एंड ऑल्सो ऑफ डेस्क बिकॉज आई माइट गो टू द फील्ड एंड गेट अ स्टोरी बट इवेंचुअली वो डेस्क पे एडिट होके छपके अगले दिन निकलती है तो इज दैट ट्रेनिंग हैपनिंग हाउ मच इज द गैप on how does one plug that yes this is the very important thing because ye pure journalism ke course mein agar ab jate ho to i don't think there is enough uh, part of this type of training in the syllabus of journalism courses this is the first thing and when the journalist enters in media house he has uh, directly given particular beat and he covers the story i think there is no special training in from the media houses to the reporters or even to the desks till now i am working in a big media house and i have not come across such, such training till that but like uh, ladly or unfa there are or there are some other ngos too they are arranging some training sessions but अगेन मुझे ये बताने में बहुत खेद होता है कि दे आर नॉट गेटिंग गुड रिस्पॉन्स फ्रॉम द मीडिया हाउसेस एंड इवन फ्रॉम द जर्नलिस्ट आई डोंट नो व्हाई व्हाई दे डोंट वांट टू लर्न एंड ये इट इज वेरी सैड स्टेट आई मस्ट एडमिट दैट एंड इट रिफ्लेक्ट्स इन द रिपोर्टिंग दैर इज नो सेंसिटिविटी यू कैन सी दैट दर इज दैट इसमें आप इसमें कुछ कहना चाहेंगी कुछ ऐड करना चाहेंगी स्पेशली जैसे अगर आप रिपोर्टिंग करते हैं या आपके यहाँ वायर पे अगर डेस्क पे लोग होते हैं इस देर एनी लाइक यू यूजली मीडिया हाउसेस हैव स्टाइल शीट्स लाइक यू नो हाउ टू यूज व्हाट वर्ड एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट इज देर एनी सच स्टाइल शीट फॉर से जेंडर सेंसिटिव रिपोर्टिंग की आप ये शब्द इस्तेमाल करेंगे ये नहीं करेंगे दीज आर दिंग्स यू विल डूज एंड डोंट्स फॉर सच रिपोर्टिंग कुछ ऐसा है uh, ये जो चीज है रिपोर्टिंग के दौरान सेंसिटिविटी को मेंटेन करना ये रीसेंट टाइम्स में आई थिंक बहुत इम्पोर्टेंस के साथ उठाया जा रहा है और उठाया गया है और जैसे कि पॉपुलेशन फर्स्ट ये कर रहा है उसी तरह एक और ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है जो मुझे याद है फेमिनिज्म इन इंडिया करके जिन्होंने एक लिस्ट दे रिलीज लिस्ट जिसमें ग्राफिक्स होते थे जिसमें रेप की जो स्टोरीज होती हैं उस उस उन ग्राफिक्स को उनमें यूज किया जा सकता है जो कि जो टिपिकल इमेजेस हैं महिलाओं की जो रेप में हम दिखाते हैं कि उन्होंने हाथ रखा हुआ है अपने चेहरे पे या फिर अंधेरे में एक कॉर्नर में एक महिला पड़ी हुई है रेप विक्टिम है तो उसको चेंज करने करते हुए जो एक नया तरीका एक रेप को दिखाने का रेप के विक्टिम्स को और परपेट्रेटर्स को उसमें दिखाने का कई बार हम रेप की स्टोरीज में देखेंगे सिर्फ रेप विक्टिम्स को जो है दिखाया जाता है ग्राफिक्स के थ्रू कभी भी ये नहीं दिखाया जाता कि कोई जो परपेट्रेटर है वो जेल के पीछे खड़ा है या एक अलग तरीका जो आई थिंक रिसेंट कुछ सालों में ये इनोवेटिव तरीके आ रहे हैं टू रिपोर्ट ऑन रेप और ऐसा कोई ऐसा जैसा कि अभी बात हो रही थी ऐसा कोई स्पेसिफिक ट्रेनिंग तो नहीं होती है मगर आई थिंक ये एक ऐसी चीज है जो हम हमें हमें भी और हमारे ऑर्गेनाइजेशन को भी आई थिंक ऑन अ रेगुलर बेसिस कभी 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 स्टोरीज के थ्रू भी सीखते रहना चाहिए ये जो सेंसिटिविटी है हमको मेंटेन करके रखने के लिए uh, 
तो आई थिंक वो बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट हो जाता है हमारी पर्सनल इन्वेस्टमेंट इस चीज को सीखने के लिए और ऑर्गेनाइजेशन की भी जो एक डेडिकेशन होती है सेंसिटिविटी को मेंटेन करके रखने के लिए शुक्रिया इस वक्त प्रगति आप अगर इंटरसेक्शनैलिटी की जैसे भी बात करी थी स्वाति ने भी करी है और तो आप अगर हमें बताएंगी कि काफी दफा जब हम स्टोरीज करते हैं और हम हेडलाइन में अगर देते हैं कि दलित वुमन रेप बाय वट काफी दफा हम लोगों को सवाल उठाते हैं कि आपका कहना है कि क्योंकि वो दलित वुमन है तो ये इम्पोर्टेंट है अगर किसी और जात कि महिला के साथ हुआ होता तो क्या वो इम्पोर्टेंट नहीं है काफी बार लोग हमें भी ऐसे सवाल उठाते हैं हमारी स्टोरीज पे आपके पास ऐसे सवाल आते हैं हाउ डू यू लुक एट दिस होल इश्यू ऑफ इंटरसेक्शनैलिटी एंड हाउ इम्पोर्टेंट इट इज फॉर मीडिया टू टेक नोट ऑफ इट एंड प्रेजेंट स्टोरीज इन अटन वे ये तो अब बहुत बढ़ गया है आफ्टर टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन आई कैन से कि वाई यू आर मैशनिंग कास्ट एंड वाई यू आर मैशनिंग रिलीजन्स एंड एवरीथिंग रेप तो रेप होता है बट इट इज नॉट ट्रू एज वी नो क्योंकि वो पूरा डायमेंशन ही बदल जाता है व्हेन uh, अगर दलित महिला है अगर वो um, अल्पसंख्यक महिला है तो पूरा पर्सपेक्टिव वो रिप्रेजेंटेशन um, पूरा स्टोरी का बदल जाता है और वी हैव टू मेंशन दिस थिंग्स इन स्टोरी प्रॉपरली एंड वो सब आना चाहिए एक्चुअली समटाइम्स इट कम्स एज केतन मेंशन कि जब ये बहुत पोलिटिकल इश्यू हो जाता है और कास्ट पॉलिटिक्स इसमें आ जाती है या रिलीजन पॉलिटिक्स इसमें आ जाती है तो वो कवरेज का पूरा रवैया बदल जाता है ये हाथरस का जो जो हुआ था वो हम दलित थी आप इफ यू रिमेंबर कठुआ रेप सो शी वाज मुस्लिम गर्ल एंड अगेन शी वाज नोमेडिक मुस्लिम गर्ल ओके सो वो तो पूरा रवैया ही बदल गया और इतना हुआ कि टू मिनिस्टर्स फ्रॉम द सेंटर Uh, where in uh, where protecting the, those um, uh, accused it happened so ye pura ravaiya badal jata hai to pathakon ke liye readers ke liye hame ye batana zaruri hai ki ye baki caste uska kahan wo rehti hai uska arthik sthiti kya hai uski ye sab dena chahiye aur ye important hai when uh, there comes to reporting of the rap i think it is important एंड आई थिंक हम लोगों ने भी देखा था एनसीआरबी का भी जो लेटेस्ट डेटा है अगर हम डेटा भी देखेंगे द इंसिडेंट्स ऑफ रेप अमंग दलित वीमेन इज मच हायर देन दी अदर कास्ट सो आई थिंक वो डेटा भी हमें बताता है कि वो एक बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट इशू है एनी थिंग इसमत यू वॉन्ट टू एड अबाउट इंटरसेक्शनैलिटी एब्सोलूटली आई थिंक जब हम इंटरसेक्शनैलिटी की बात करते हैं हम दलित uh, 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 जैसे फॉर एग्जाम्पल हाथस के केस की अभी बात की तो उसमें कई बार मेरे मुझे भी पर्सनली कई लोगों ने ये सवाल पूछा कि इसमें तुमको क्या जरूरत है ये बोलने की बार बार कि वो एक दलित महिला है दलित महिला है दलित महिला है लेकिन इसमें मुझे जो पर्सनली जो मैं जब मैं ग्राउंड पे गई और मैंने जब देखा तो वहां पे जो विलेज जहाँ पे ये केस हुआ था उसके अगर आप डायनेमिक्स को देखते हैं तो ये बहुत ही क्लियर हो जाता है बहुत ही एविडेंट हो जाता है कि ये जो रेप है गैंगरेप का इश्यू है वो सिर्फ वो एक आइसोलेशन में नहीं हुआ है वो एक एग्जिस्टिंग uh, हायरार्की और एक एग्जिस्टिंग सिस्टम है uh, जो कि उस गांव में ऑलरेडी प्रिविलेंट है जिसके जिस जो इसको सपोर्ट कर रहा है uh, उस उस गैंगरेप को या फिर इंस्टेंसेस ऑफ यू नो अदर वायलेंस विच आर हैपनिंग अगेंस्ट दलित इन दैट विलेज तो ये सवाल पूछना कि इसमें कास्ट क्यों लेकर आ रहे हो इससे इम्पोर्टेंट हमारे लिए इससे ज्यादा जरूरी ये समझना है कि अगर ये दलित महिला है तो हम उसके कॉन्टेक्स्ट को समझें और पूरे जो एक चीजों को एक कॉन्टेक्स्ट के थ्रू देखें जिससे हमें ये चीजें समझने में भी हैरारकी समझने में जो है बेहतर आई थिंक अंडरस्टैंडिंग होगी एज जर्नलिस्ट एंड एज जनरल पीपल ऑल्सो Uh, thanks ismat and i think we are almost uh, coming towards the end of the panel discussion pragati if you want any last word you want to say something i had cut you short in the beginning i'm sorry now you can just wind up your thought uh, things uh, i have to mention uh, when it comes to marathi reporting i want to mention that uh, you will see few words repetitively i think the, the, those words will be there in other regional languages also Uh, like uh, for accused they use naradham you will see definitely you will see this word pashavi like saitan rakshasi kritya adham pravrutti niche all this so <laughs> so he uh, what whoever those pers- 
persons are those are only accused those are not convicted persons so this thing is observed uh, one more thing uh, in uh, i always see uh, they use atyachar in in their story they use atyachar and they don't say balatkar i don't know why uh, especially when there is story about uh, poxo cases they always use atyachar and uh, again i have always have to correct that so why why you are saying atyachar say balatkar if there, there is a balatkar um, this uh, intersectionality is just we have discussed uh, i will uh, i would like to add a copardi case uh, because i visited there and uh, it was uh, just ketan mentioned i think uh, uh, it was very very shameful caste politics uh, at that uh, time and it was uh, reported even so uh, just i want to mention that uh, it was a very uh, important role play, uh, played by media uh, in that particular case and it was widely covered and uh, very sensibly covered we can say but i just want to mention uh, two things in that case um, the side stories covered along with the, with that uh, was um, one was uh, commu uh, commuting problem of girls in that area and not only in that area all over maharashtra uh, girls have to commute from their remote villages to uh, schools and uh, again the uh, the girl in that case uh, she was also she had to go uh, for uh, i think 5 6 kilometers uh, she was cycling and uh, she had to go for the school and that issue was uh, widely covered that was a side story of course but widely covered by regional media in the uh, at that time and uh, the impact was in 2018 uh maharashtra government announced a free commuting uh, up to 12th uh, for girls up to 12th and it uh, this was the positive impact of this side story covering uh, one more thing i will mention in that case there was one maharaj and uh, he is a political he was a political guru of um, political leaders of maharashtra and he came over there and uh, he uh, he was about to erect the uh, statue of that girl uh, Over there, and he started uh, demanding for donations and all. The process was already started, but regional media at that time acted very well. And he, uh, they opposed him, and uh, it uh, never happened. So it was one more thing I remember. So rape case can go anywhere when there comes caste politics and all. That's what I. Mean. Thanks, Pragati, and we. Uh, Ketan has also uh, been able to join us again. Ketan, we are just winding up the panel discussion. Any uh, thoughts you want to share with us? Definitely. Till what point was I? Uh, because then I could hear only my voice, and uh, I went off. So, till what point uh, could the others uh, listen to me? Uh, we we've talked about intersectionality. If there is something you want to speak about that, yes, yes, the whole sir. thing of caste. So, so, so yeah. So in, even in uh, before I got uh, uh, lost due to the uh, bad battery in service. So I think uh, uh, the media, <clears throat> by its own nature, by its sheer nature, uses uh, colorful language in reporting all events, and that applies uh, uh, to to the coverage of uh, such sensitive cases as well. so uh, i was i was making a point about legal reporters and crime reporters because most of the cases are usually covered by legal reporters and crime reporters and when they achieve a certain level of seniority they often as a city editor i have been witness uh, to leading teams and i find that they pride on their contacts of how well they know a certain dcp or a commissioner of police if they are a crime reporter and how they know senior lawyers well and uh, their contacts are limited to only the legal fraternity or the police fraternity but to cover such case cases more um, through more in intersectionality lenses or more sensitively uh, th their training is integral so in in uh, you mentioned reporter training i would further uh, narrow it down to legal reporters and crime reporters training of social uh, sensitivity across languages this is not like english media does a better job than the regional media uh, and as pragati mentioned that uh, because of the collective shame of uh, the delhi case there has been a certain sensitivity that has come in however there are there are more things uh, that are uh, desirable and this covert submission to uh, someone's caste and religious hierarchy when it comes to covering rape and not independently covering a uh, rape as such uh, till it becomes a part of a political master narrative is is a problem that all of us are 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 fighting with, so once um, there is a 
our sensitivity training and if we independently see these incidents as rape incidents and and understand and sensitize ourselves about the intersectionalities uh, okay these are all good things to say uh, the the reality on the ground may be a little uh, bleak however surveys such as these have at least shown us a mirror that there is at least a certain amount of openness uh, to covering these cases and and shaming the perpetrators so i think that's a good start to begin with just a minute i just want to know ismita and uh, ketan uh, what do you think about uh, disha and uh, shakti uh, laws shadisha uh, is uh, in uh, uh, andhra pradesh and here uh, in maharashtra we have shakti so is it failure of media what do you think well uh, it is it is not a failure of media i think uh, uh, societal sensitization is is more integral and media is also i don't see media bereft from society okay so if we are talking about capital punishment and uh, and the way the master narrative goes like you know we almost end up uh, sounding like uh, a monarchy and not a democracy so i think uh, uh, it's not a failure of media per se but it's a failure of our social consciousness we all always see things uh, in in extremes we uh, we say uh, atrocious things like you know uh like castration of perpetrators and 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 such things when the thing happens and then uh perpetuate or continue to perpetuate a, a wrong gender narrative in our day to day interactions and communication so i feel that uh, a general societal uh, consciousness and sensitivity is the need of the day rather than pinpointing uh, uh, or or holding uh, media for the collective blame thank you ketan bahut bahut shukriya and uh, i think uh, we have come to the end of the panel discussion uh, i want to thank all the panelists pragati ketan ismat for joining us and um, all the people attending over here and a large number of people who have joined us virtually from different parts of the country and i think over to you rituna thank you nidhi and thank you so much all the panelists that was indeed an eye opening session and i'm definitely going to be viewing it once the recording is going to be uploaded on our youtube channel uh, from skills to biases and general apathy the depth of information shared was tremendous thank you once again for this um i now open the house for questions if there are any please uh, would you just raise your hands for those online and we will unmute you and ask let you ask questions to the panelists you could also type in the chat in case uh, you wish to ask a question right so we have a question coming in now this way okay acha acha so <laughs> yeah looks so odd so i want to ask first to uh, ketan and then same question to uh, ma'am uh first uh, um, thing is that when we were talking about the crime reporters which actually ketan brought in very rightly it's not even uh, while when we are in a edit meeting like i have worked in almost all organization i have seen that not even in the edit meeting uh, forget about the uh, printing part it's not addressed properly in the office they ask where the girl stays uh, what is her profile uska school ka pata karo what is her family doing that everyone in the office is also curious to how do we fill that gap i think uh, 
as as journalist or as editors or or as the part of the profession we are always taught filters and and this filter should apply at various levels i can get the urgency that a editor feels to get all the details of the case uh in the interest of the story being reported from all angles so i think uh, there is there is no problem with that the problem really comes while filtering uh, how suddenly a, a posco law is is not followed or as pragati mentioned that suddenly the name of of the victim went to print or um, so so i think that that filtering is very important and so uh, yeah that's a very important point that you uh, brought forth uh, because uh, the sensitivity is not just limited to the reporters because uh, ultimately the person who's editing the copy at the desk or editing a tv script in a in a news channel is also needs the same kind of sensitivity so so i'm not trying to go in the weeds but i think uh, whoever is dealing with the business of filing the copy copy and editing a copy both need to be sensitized uh, ma'am in marathi media specifically that name usually that name doesn't go uh, म्हणजे महाराष्ट्र टाइम्स किंवा कुठल्याही मराठी मी हा प्रश्न मराठीत विचारू वाटलास तर हिंदीत विचारते तर त्या याच्यामध्ये हिंदी पेपर जे असतात आणि मराठी पेपर असतात त्याच्यामध्ये नॉर्मली आहे ना ते नाव नाही जात आणि हा जो तुम्ही बलात्कार जो आहे ना तो प्रश्न यू आर ब्रॉट इन ऍक्च्युली राईटली सेट दॅट तो पॉक्सो असेल तर तो अत्याचारच जातो तर जो जो फिल्टर लेअर आहे डिस्पाईट आय एम बिंग असोसिएटेड विथ पॉप्युलन पॉप्युलेशन फर्स्ट फॉर अ लॉंग डिस्पाईट दॅट द लेअर ऑफ ट्रेनिंग अँड तो जो गॅप आहे तो तसाच मेंटेन राहतोय तो हाऊ वुड वी सी दॅट एज अ रिपोर्टर डेस्क एडिटर म्हणजे इट्स वन सीन अ ब्लू मून इट हॅज हॅपन दॅट सम एडिटर स्टॉप द कॉपी बट इट इज स्टील हॅपनिंग लाईक वेन वी वर जस्ट टू ब्रिंग दिस थिंग इन लाईट बिकॉज वी मेन्शन अबाउट शक्ती मेल थिंग people in the same fraternity were very curious i still remember when i came to press club people were asking who is that photo journalist so that is also the mindset i suppose uh, population first also needs to work in the society not only with the media but also in general with the society that we are very curious to know the name like what a 10 second intervention in this uh, so i think uh, प्रत्येक न्यूज पेपर ची एक स्टाइल शीट असते सो तशी स्टाइल शीट रेप रिपोर्टिंग किंवा जेंडर रिपोर्टिंग ची सुद्धा असावी अगेन आय ट्रान्सलेट माय सेल्फ सो एव्हरी न्यूज पेपर हॅज अ स्टाइल शीट और एव्हरी न्यूज ऑर्गनायझेशन वर्क इट स्टॉल्ड हॅज अ स्टाइल शीट दिस स्टाइल शीट इज अबाउट अ कॉमा फुल स्टॉप अँड एडिटिंग सो सिमिलरली देर शुड बी अ स्टाइल शीट फॉर जेंडर सेन्सिटिव्ह रिपोर्टिंग सो आय थिंक दॅट इज वन सजेशन दॅट वी कॅन गो होम विथ फ्रॉम दिस सेशन येस thank you yes very much agree with ketan <laughs> and more and more trainings are uh, necessary which lack of that thing i i observe uh, i just uh, want to no no i want to respond i mean ask because uh, uh, as pragati has said in spite of our efforts to sort of uh, conduct so many training programs sensitize the media the response is always uh, you know not so instant or enthusiastic like we have to pursue convince and then bring people to the training programs but once they attend the training program i see there's a change always for a uh, for a long term change in the people uh, is it because uh, journalists don't have time because this continuous 24 hour kind of reporting or there are no uh you know uh, there is no time uh, given by the organization for professional enhancement like in many organizations you have for in academics for instance in a month you can spend five days attending seminars workshops etc is it that or is it because because we don't have such facilities or is it because the media houses are cutting on costs and uh, uh, putting too much work on small number of people there must be some reason why there is no response right it is uh, I, i mean i do not want to say that journalists are not interested in learning because i'm sure every journalist aspires to do well make a mark for himself or herself so themselves so there is a uh, i mean where is the 
gap? Why is it that there is no response from the media? I want to ask all four of you. I think uh, uh, two, three things are happening uh, here. One is um, the how much need the media organization feels for training their journalists for something like gender sensitive reporting. What my understanding is also a lot of places where you have women at senior positions. I mean, I may be wrong, uh, but there they definitely feel the importance. And this is given maybe more prominence or, you know, it becomes slightly more important. Second thing is, yes, there are limited resources now after the, especially after the pandemic, the number of reporters, people on the desk, everything has become, uh, you know, has shrunk. So you have possibly a limited number of reporters or desk people, uh, you know, doing multiple stories. So if I have to say, send some for a training for say three days uh, I have to really think to be honest you know if it's like a one day training I am more than happy to send you know my people okay just go and attend the training but say three days four days I have to think because then it means that those three four days that I have to publish certain number of stories that kind of you know becomes so I think there are multiple uh, things happening over there and especially if we can do more I don't know virtual uh, meetings now like this. So I don't have to send people from say Lucknow to uh, somewhere else in Karnataka for a meeting. So if we can have some kind of a virtual thing and also what Ketan also said about a style sheet, you know, like uh, some organization who work on mental health have actually prepared something for media guidelines on mental health. How do you report on that? So if something like that can be brought out for media organizations, some kind of guidelines, I think it will really, really help. Really? Again, again, those guidelines are in English. No, I again, think that much. Yeah, there is again a problem in regional languages. It never comes up to the regional languages style sheet and all. So we have to work with that also. No, no, bilkul, yeah, bilkul. That is the thing. Yeah, Have we have guidelines on reporting on many issues like LGBTQ, gender-based violence, pre-birth sex selection, abortion. We have developed a lot of guidelines and we disseminate it also quite widely whenever we have programs. It's there on our online, uh, on our website. And I think um, it's also a question of uh, people, I mean, journalists, I mean, media, and then also media adopting them for their in-house uh, dissemination which is very, very important. Dr. Sharda, I will just add to this uh, point. On a serious as well as a lighter note, if we re if you uh, reach out to the HR or the owners of the organization, uh, yeah. then, then, <laughs> institu no, then, institu then institutionalizing this will be... Uh, uh, That's instead, instead, of, instead, of, instead of personal invitation. Yeah. Ha, and personal invitation, I think there will be a bandwidth issue. There will be a hesitancy. The, the younger reporters may just construe this as, oh some boring lengthy session on the social topic and I'm being very upfront the way it will be approached. Uh, I think it should be institutionalized from uh, organization perspective so that one organization sets a benchmark and then the others will also follow. Thank you for that uh, very very important input. Now our target is the HR department. <laughs> Thanks so much. Yes. Ma'am, I wanted to ask this question to you. Uh, how do we d differentiate, uh, you know, when to use uh, institution education? Sorry. Yeah. How do we, uh, you know, differentiate when to use educational institutes name in this story and when not, uh, when it is, because sometimes organizations, uh, I remember uh, working, uh, so they, the editor wanted us to give at least, 100 meters away this location so that people will know you know so i used to find it very dicey do we have to do it or you know we should uh, completely not use it again it is uh, just as uh, mentioned it is uh, we have to think case to case differently because in that case uh, that girl uh, that box case was there and uh, she was from that school so, if she goes to school, the parents 
डर जाते हैं ये हो सकता था तो इन दैट केस इट वॉज अ वेरी राइट नॉट टू पब्लिश नेम ऑफ दैट स्कूल बट जैसे कि ये रिपोर्ट में लिखा गया है कि ये आईआईटी आई गुवाहाटी तो वो जहां हुआ था वो जो अक्यूज थे वो सेम ऑर्गेनाइजेशन से थे और वन ऑफ द विक्टिम वॉज अगेन फ्रॉम दैट सेम ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सो इन दैट केस वी हैव टू ऑफकोर्स मेंशन द नेम ऑफ दैट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सो वी हैव टू थिंक केस टू केस डिफरेंटली आई थिंक so there is we cannot say this is hard and fast ki name of uh, that uh, educational organization should be published or should not be published it will differ i guess what do you think swate mm-hmm. sometimes what has happened is uh, when uh, certain institutions are you know some way associated with the art department so mm-hmm. they pressurize us no you can't put the name we will not get the business so so now the editor wants us not to mention so how does it work so, <laughs> so we have to go with editorial policy we can't help <laughs> you know uh, i have been trying to pitch a story on the uh, you know our tribal uh, regions rape incidents in west bengal but uh, you know i had published pitched it to some uh, other uh, organization and they the response they gave me is that why do we have to pursue this story is any uh, you know uh, big name associated with this story or some politician or some actor is actually voicing this uh, say so they did not want to you know, they were not keen to take it up so how do we you know approach these kind of stories uh, when we like i am a freelancer right now so how do we pitch these kind of stories so that you know, editors i take? think um, in in such stories there is always a human angle and the human angle is more than sufficient if you uh, um, write it in well verse it is it always goes uh, well i think so that human angle you have to put in proper words and that, that's your skill i think it is it is it is always be there i mean the way you would have more reportage on urban uh, rape cases in urban areas it will always be more than say adivasi women getting raped somewhere or so that bias is always there and like i said that you know now everybody wants to report only nirbhaya jab tak nirbhaya jaisa kaand nahi hoga it's not important enough you know if some other woman gets even in reports they say this is second there. nirbhaya nirbhaya in mumbai nirbhaya in falana like this all right um so maybe is se sehmat hu this is mr parikshit nirbhay from amar ujala who says maybe is se sehmat hu bhavishya mein is tarah ka koi program rehta hai to amar ujala apne sabhi unit ko jodte hue isme shaamil hone ka prayas karega yay but so encouraging thank you uh, ishrat singh has raised a question so you just have to go up Why? Why don't you just unmute? Hi. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, we can hear you. Can you just speak a little louder? Yes. Uh, so, greetings, everybody. Uh, my name is Ishrat, and I am a senior research fellow at the journalism department of uh, Punjab University, Chandigarh. And I am currently writing my thesis on uh, coverage of uh, rape cases in print media. But I am uh, also looking at newspapers from around the world, not just India. and because i'm currently analyzing my data what i've come across and the issue that i want to uh, discuss or ask about is the difference that we are kind of creating in sense of uh, event based and issue based reporting when it comes to rape so all the panelists have pointed out the reasons you know uh, be it political reasons or be it post nirbhaya we are only looking at the horrificness you know of the cases and then we make it a big issue but the problem is even if you look at hathras for example uh we started with a rape case and then we talked about everything the family uh the cremation the politics of it so my problem is even if we are covering the cases for a long period of time we are still only keeping it to the event if we really want to make a difference with our uh, journalism uh, we need to somehow focus more on the issue which uh, 
we are kind of missing out. So, you know, anybody of you can take this question. Thank you. Uh, Ketan, you want to take that? Do you want to respond to that? Well, <clears throat> so, so again, it depends on the uh, the priority of that uh, news organization. Can you be slightly louder, Ketan? We can't hear you. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it depends on the priority uh, of the news organization that has set. Uh, Ketan, I'm sorry, we still cannot hear you, please. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you. Am I audible now? Better than before. Am I audible now? Yes, this is great. Thank you. Okay, so I think it depends on the priority uh, of the news in organization, whether it uh, an, an incident like this becomes an uh, event or an issue. Uh, I, uh, ideally, uh, it should be presented as an issue and not as an uh, event. Uh, but as I, as I told you the example of the Kherlanji case where I covered in 2006, uh, NDTV decided to cover it as an issue. And later on, the state's politics, the Dalit politics of Maharashtra, uh, it became a defining political event and the rest joined the case. So unfortunately, the ground reality is that only when it becomes an issue, only when a Rahul Gandhi or a Priyanka Gandhi go to Hathras or the media is not allowed to enter and cover, only then uh, it becomes a coverage priority. Uh, independently, uh, because of the heinousness of the crime, it should become a, become a coverage priority. However, I won't mis mince my words. Uh, um, as an independent observer, I feel that it only becomes uh, a coverage priority once it becomes an event and not because it's an issue worth covering. Also, I think I just want to add to what Ketan said is a lot of times uh, we as media people also need to revisit those stories. So what happens is that it's an event that happens, we cover it and then we move on to other things and we never really go back and see what is happening. Uh, uh, to you know like uh, I remember we carried a huge series on Rakt Ranjit where we went back to those girls who were you know adolescent girls who were raped and then we documented their story saying now they are uh, somebody's a mother and you know what has happened to them you know we just report on that rape happened but we need, also need to I guess revisit those stories and keep talking about them again and again and again rather than leaving it as just an event. Yeah, again, the number of rapes happening in the country, the number is so huge. So it cannot be reported as expected. So it will happen. And whatever we are reporting, it will be the, uh, it should be reporting as an issue, right? Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am a student. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, good afternoon. I'm a student. I don't have any uh, like experience. So my view would not be that accepted. I can like, that's what I think. But I have this question, like, uh, as Ketan sir mentioned that uh, people get like the news industries uh, go and interview the things when they get polit politicized, okay, when the political ang angle enters. But if it uh, enters, then what about the uh, like the media, like the flag would happen, like the ownership I will affect. So do you think that if politics enter into every topic, then it would be uh, showcased as, as what it is? I don't know if I'm making sense or not. No, no, you're making perfect sense. Uh, <clears throat> many a times, politics enters family WhatsApp groups. Uh, why does it happen? Because politics per se cannot be separated from our lives. People are political beings and they react in a certain way. Now, more is expect, expected out of the uh, media houses. However, you have to also appreciate that uh, media is a profession and the owners and the people who run it view it as a profession. And, uh, and here, uh, be it largely or be it concerned journalists, we are all torch bearers. We can play... Uh, the, the role of a whistle dog, we can play the role of a torch bearer. However, the reality is that uh, uh, media is a businesses. So, so the same moral lens can be applied to toxic family groups, WhatsApp groups, which uh, come out with such uh, random provocative uh, stuff. 
so i think the the same analogy i'll give to uh, media groups that they are a, they are a business and of course they, there there are certain sensitivities uh, but when it comes to selection of news or approach to a news i think there are uh, coverage priorities that many a times dominate over over coverage of sensitive news okay thank you sir so just like one more question i'm sorry uh, is just that ki uh, like now like most of the uh, like the better investigate like this is what i have like because i'm a journalist student like i do so what i feel is that many like small business entities like news laundry for example or like online digital have become like better source of information than broadcast or print is what i believe so like do you stand with it like just because like they have got that attention so they have some more restrictions to themselves how reliable do are those are so ask that to yourself i think that's a that's a great question to ask in a panel where you have representation from both you know so before we get into any kind of a heated debate i'm not saying about all digital but <laughs> <laughs> absolutely no, like a uh, news laundry like uh, the the person like an uh, i mean anand sikri is like have worked a lot like the experience he has is like uh, quite appreciated like for my aspect like it is so uh, like that's why like i'm not uh, asking about all the small but like some repeated like news laundry the coined it become or like the print it has in that perspective i'm asking no there there are there are certain uh, news organizations definitely they are keeping the flag high and um, are more brave than the others so i i wouldn't uh, uh, comment on that however i would like to limit my reply to independent youtubers and there are some youtubers that are that have uh, beat the farmers uh, uh, agitation or coverage of rapes or expressing opinions on that uh, of course there is a lot of Uh, as pragati also mentioned that uncensored or how do you uh, weigh them on the how do you weigh them on the metric of reliability that is the cornerstone of journalism so reliability uh, that is one thing but there are there are many illustrious name like uh, 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 vinod dua ji's name comes to my mind that he was almost on his own after uh, uh, quitting the mainstream media and then uh, he left a, a body of journalism till his last day which was quite independent and reliable right so sister wa okay sure i don't have a question i have a thought um all that you've heard today even i have been listening and hearing for the last several years and these issues will continue what i am now concerned about is how do we finally make that societal impact that we all refer to the suggestion that i have is is it possible for one organization to take the initiative and get all these ngos institutions uh, whoever is working on gender gender issues uh, to work together to appoint some experts if necessary involve global experts if necessary and finally evolve a plan a plan a strategy which will then we take it from like it take it from state to state you can't do it all over the country at one time take it from state to state involve every state organization somewhere identify them and then see whether we can make a little greater impact on society and this should go across some cities and villages because today villages many villages are becoming far more sensitized as again as we referred to so this is what i thought i would like to observe thank you sir for this great thoughts i think people really appreciate we totally agree with what you are saying so yes um right so that was indeed an eye opening uh, session from skews to biases and general apathy the depth of information shared was absolutely tremendous so i thank all the panelists once again for this